Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're going to be taking a look at the DJI Mavic 3 and directly comparing it against the Air 2S. Been working on this video for quite some time now. We did a whole bunch of tests uh, determining the overall quality of the 4K, 5K video capturing capabilities on both drones. A couple of different low light nighttime shots. We also uh, tested out the overall safety features, the controllers, flight dynamics, as well as the battery life. Hopefully, we want to determine whether it's really worth upgrading to the Mavic 3, whether the Hasselblad camera is really worth it, considering the fact that it also costs double the amount as the Air 2S. We're going to first take a look at the overall video capturing capabilities on both side by side, and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty. So let's get right into it. Now, my initial impressions of the footage coming out of both drones are they actually look fairly similar. They shoot similar resolutions. In fact, the Mavic Air 2S can shoot slightly higher resolution at 5.4K at 30 FPS versus 5.1K on the Mavic 3, but it can shoot that resolution up to 50 FPS and 4K at 120 versus 60 FPS, etc. We'll talk about the video parameters later on, but in terms of the initial quality coming out of both drones, I think the they do a fantastic job of reproducing some great looking aerial photography. Now, in terms of the portability factor on both drones, the Mavic Air 2S is definitely going to be a little bit more compact. In terms of width and length, you're looking at about uh, 97 by 180 millimeters versus on the Mavic 3, you're looking at 96 by 221 millimeters. And in terms of the overall height or thickness of the drones, you're looking at 77 millimeters on the Air 2S versus 90 millimeters on the Mavic 3. Additionally, in terms of overall weight, the Air is about 300 grams lighter and in the unfolded position the total wingspan from a diagonal standpoint is about 302 millimeters on the air versus about 380 on the Mavic 3. Furthermore in terms of the amount of sensors on the Mavic 3 it has omnidirectional sensors so both a binocular vision at the front back top bottom as well as left and right lateral sensing capabilities. On the Air 2S you're looking at pretty much the same coverage with the exception of the lateral sensing capabilities isn't as great as the Mavic 3 since it uh, more heavily relies on the uh, front and rear sensors to give it an idea of what's left and right from a obstacle avoidance standpoint. That being said, regardless of their sensing capabilities, both drones can actively avoid obstacles in route of a specific waypoint, whether in manual flight mode or in autonomous flight. Both drones will also adjust their altitude to match uneven terrain and do pretty much all they can to avoid any unwanted crashes or unexpected incidents. Now, it's important to note that the current launch version of the Mavic 3 doesn't have access to the smart flying modes such as active track, master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, etc. Those features will be enabled in an eventual firmware update coming January 2022. But uh, right now, you can access all those smart flying capabilities on the Air 2S pretty much since it launched. So uh, right now, if you need to get access to those, uh, the Air 2S actually has it and temporarily those features are not available on the Mavic 3. In terms of the flight dynamics, in both normal and cinema mode, both drones respond very similarly. The only real difference is in sport mode or S mode, where you do have a faster uh, maximum ascent speed of up to 8 meters per second versus 6 meters per second on the Mavic 3 and Air, respectively. Uh, the uh, Air and uh, Mavic 3 pretty much have the same horizontal maximum uh, velocity speed of up to 19 meters per second in S mode 
or 68 kilometers an hour. Furthermore, in terms of hover stability, both are rock solid since they utilize similar technology with binocular vision positioning sensors as well as the uh, infrared sensors. And at nighttime, they even have a UFO inspired auxiliary LED light, which will shine very brightly down onto the ground so they can triangulate their landing position exactly and be very accurate even without a GPS signal. If you get the standard versions of the drones, you get the RCN1 controller from DJI, also known as the RC231. It has a dual thumbstick controls, dedicated uh, control dial for your uh, gimbals, as well as record, emergency brake, return to home, and similar uh, battery performance of five to six hours. However, the data transmission between the controller, smartphone, and drone are a little bit different. On the new Mavic 3, they're utilizing their new O3 Plus video transmission system, which can give you 1080p feed at 60 FPS with a maximum communication distance of 15 kilometers in ideal conditions. On the Air 2S, they're utilizing the first generation O3 system, which will get you 1080p 30 FPS, but a 12 kilometer maximum communication range, but actually a little bit better uh, latency at 120 millisecond response time versus 130 millisecond response time with the standard RC231 controller when using it with the Mavic 3. However, if you upgrade it to the RC Pro version of the controller, you get 120 millisecond response time in addition to things like Wi-Fi 6 with 80 megabytes per second wireless data transmission, which is great if you want to do uh, some over-the-air recording or broadcasting or even uh, some high-quality live streaming. Now, before we get into the cameras themselves, I just want to talk about the gimbals that's included on both drones. They're both utilizing a motorized three-axis stabilization system. Now, the way most gimbals work is that they counteract the movement of the camera operator, whether that be a person or a drone. So you traditionally have a mechanical range and a controllable range. The mechanical range actually erases the extraneous movement in the X, Y, and Z axis, also known as tilt, roll, or pan, in order to deliver a smooth looking shot. And there's also a controllable range, which is typically in the pan and tilt category. Now on the Mavic 3, due to the fact that it has a greater mechanical range on the gimbal, it's able to increase the range of angular vibration reduction, plus or minus 0.007 degrees versus the angular vibration range is plus or minus 0.01 degrees on the Mavic Air 2S and the controllable range on the gimbal is also greater on the Mavic 3 where you can uh, tilt from a minus 90 to plus 35. You can also pan minus 5 degrees to plus 5 degrees versus on the Air 2S. You're limited to only tilt functions and by default it's set to minus 90 degrees to zero degrees and in extended mode it gets up to plus 20. 24 degrees. Now those being the numbers in reality when you're up in the air both drones actually deliver very smooth looking footage and I can't really tell the difference between the two in terms of actual vibration or reduction. Both uh, deliver super good looking footage when you're panning, tilting, doing all that uh, good stuff. I did however find that when you're walking with the drone that the Air 2S actually managed to reduce the overall vibration and uh, produce a lot better looking footage than the Mavic 3 which is definitely not designed to be used in a more traditional gimbal style when you're just walking around with the drone and shooting a video versus the Air uh, 2S is definitely a lot more smoother in that kind of scenario. But if you're going to be using them up in the air, there's no real difference based on my experience. Now finally, let's talk about the cameras on both of these two. Now on the Mavic Air 2S, you're looking at a one inch CMOS chip, similar overall specifications to what we found on the Mavic 2 Pro, but a little bit different. 20 megapixel steels capabilities. The lens on it is 22 millimeters, 35 equivalent with a field of view of 88 degrees. Maximum aperture is rated at F2.8. Now on the Mavic 3, we're utilizing a Hasselblad design four-thirds CMOS chip with a uh, equivalent uh, sensor size of 1.33 repeating inch, 20 megapixel resolution. The lens on it is a little bit narrower than on the Air, 84 degrees or 24 millimeters, and a maximum aperture range of the same of f2.8. 
Now, what's really interesting from a video standpoint is that the maximum resolution on video is actually higher on the Mavic Air 2S. It can record 5.4K or specifically 5472 by 3078 at 30 FPS versus you're looking at 5.1K or 5120 by 2700 on the Mavic 3, but it can record that resolution at up to 50 frames per second. Additionally, when you're recording 4K, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second on the Mavic 3 versus 60 FPS on the Air. And in 1080p mode, you can record up to 200 frames per second on the Mavic 3 versus 120 frames per second on the Air 2S. Additionally, the maximum video bit rate is also higher on the Mavic 3 at up to 200 megabits per second, recording H.264 codec versus you're looking at 150 megabits per second on the Mavic Air 2S. And if you get the Cine version of the Mavic 3, you can record Apple ProRes 422HQ which will get you an almost uncompressed image which will get you a lot more latitude in terms of color correction and grading as well as be ideal from a workflow standpoint if you're in a commercial environment that utilizes Apple ProRes. However, for most people, I don't think that the Cine version is really worth it, considering the fact that even the standard version of the Mavic Air 2S and indeed the Mavic 3 can record 10-bit D-Log picture profile settings, giving you over 12 stops of dynamic range. Specifically on the Mavic 3, you're looking at 12.8 stops versus 12.6 stops on the Mavic Air 2S. Now, based on my experience thus far, I would have to say that in terms of shadow and highlight details in ideal circumstances, both cameras deliver some excellent looking footage. However, you can see a lot more cloud details, for example, in the sky, in a lot of our uh, example shots, as well as a better overall color reproduction that's more true to life on the Mavic 3 compared to the Air 2S. Additionally, in conjunction with the Mavic 3's greater video bit rate and higher dynamic range, shooting in Cinema D-Log allows for a greater preservation of the image details, including shadow, highlight, and colors, allowing more capabilities for post-production, color correction, grading, etc., on the Mavic 3 and the Air 2S definitely does a good job in terms of reproducing a fairly accurate looking image but just doesn't have the same level of details preserved in the shadow and highlights and a lot of that detail is lost due to compression artifacts. And based on what I've experienced thus far, because we have a larger imaging sensor able to gather more light and photons on each of the pixels on the Mavic 3, you're going to utilize images that look a lot more vibrant, bright, less noisy, and with less artifacts compared to the one inch CMOS chip found on the Air 2S, which definitely doesn't look bad, but is definitely darker, has more noise, and we can't see the relative amount of shadow detail, highlight preserved as much as we find on the Mavic 3. Furthermore, in terms of the ISO range, both are rated at around 100 to 6400 ISO. So the sensor is actually the same in terms of light sensitivity, but obviously we have that larger size of 1.33 versus one inch on the Air 2S and the Mavic 3. So with that larger size, as we mentioned before, you're gonna gather more light and produce a brighter looking image in pitch black, low light conditions. Now, in addition to the main Hasselblad camera on the Mavic 3, we also have a secondary telephoto camera that utilizes a half inch CMOS chip with 12 megapixel resolution in terms of stills. We have a 162 millimeter lens with f4.4 maximum aperture rating. And in combination with the four times digital zoom, you can get up to 28 times hybrid zoom capabilities and record 4K video at up to 30 FPS with this camera. Now, because we're utilizing a hybrid optical zoom system, which is going to utilize both the main Hasselblad camera, the uh, telephoto camera that kicks in at seven times zoom as well as uh, the 28 times camera which is going to combine the optical zoom with the digital zoom uh, capabilities at 4x you're going to utilize different cameras different zoom capabilities at those different magnifications ideally when you're using the zoom camera you probably want to use it at seven times settings this is where you're going to find very little imaging artifacts you're pretty much utilizing the full optical nature of the zoom camera and the full resolution of the second secondary telephoto camera sensor. 
And at the seven times zoom range, everything looks tremendous. It's only when you start uh, zooming in a little bit more where the quality starts to degrade and we start introducing a lot of digital noise with the introduction of the digital zoom factor. And at 28 times, you can see that we can certainly zoom into far away and distant objects and have a nice overall look of them. But the sharpness, clarity, and overall fidelity of the image definitely is not as good as in the later stage of the zoom range. So this is great from a utilitarian standpoint if you want to spy on somebody, for example, but uh, from a filmmaking perspective, less usable. Now on the Mavic Air 2S, we don't have a secondary telephoto camera, so all the zooming capabilities are going to be done through the uh, digital zoom using the main camera. And at 4K video settings, you can record up to four times digital zoom and eight times digital zoom in 1080p mode. The quality is definitely not going to be as good as what we encounter with the Mavic 3, but usable from a utilitary standpoint again. Lastly, let's talk about the battery capacity and overall flight time that we've experienced. In terms of actual capacity on the Mavic 3, we have a fairly large 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And on the Air 2S, you have a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. The uh, rated flight time, according to DJI, is 46 minutes. Very impressive on the Mavic 3 versus 31 minutes on the Air 2S. The Air 2S is certainly impressive for a smaller compact drone, but to have any drone, uh, let alone one that weighs almost 900 grams, go over 40 minutes is extremely impressive uh, based on what I've encountered through the past couple of years. And uh, based on our experience, we typically get everywhere in between 35 to 38 minutes of flight time on our Mavic 3. And uh, we're kind of aggressive with our drone in terms of uh, utilizing the sport mode quite a bit. But in ideal conditions, you can easily get probably 40 minutes if you're gentle with the drone in ideal low wind resistant conditions. And uh, our uh, flight time time generally hovers around 25 minutes on average with the Air 2S. Now in summary, I'm just going to go over the brief highlights that each drone presents as a distinct advantage. Firstly, starting with the Mavic 3. I think having that dedicated telephoto camera is a huge advantage in the sense that you can zoom into far distance objects and get a fantastic shot with that dedicated zoom capabilities. And especially in the seven times optical zooms, the results are stunning at 4K 30 FPS. Next definitely has to be uh, the low light performance using that larger Hasselblad four thirds inch sensor. It's gonna get you a lot better results, better dynamic range, overall video and photo capturing capabilities in a nightscape mode, especially if you're gonna capture uh, aerial photography in kind of a city environment. Uh, definitely a huge advantage with any drone with a built-in camera. Additionally, with the city version of the drone, you can capture Apple ProRes 422HQ. That could be a huge advantage for somebody working in a professional environment that utilizes that codec exclusively. And last but not least has to be the battery performance. Any drone that can fly over 40 minutes and has this kind of video capturing uh, performance is definitely something unheard of. Additionally, with that kind of battery performance, you probably don't need to invest in a secondary uh, battery if you're not gonna be flying it as frequently or as long, which is definitely something on the plus side because the drone is already over $2,000 to begin with. Now moving forward and talking about the advantages on the Mavic Air 2S. In terms of actual max resolution, as we mentioned before, it can shoot uh, technically at a higher resolution at 5.4K versus 5.1K on the Mavic 3, but obviously you're limited to 30 FPS, which is fine for most people, I think. Next, if you wanna be a little bit more portable, mobile, and looking for the most compact solution with the most amount of video capabilities, I still think the Air 2S is probably the best drone out there for that, especially in this environment where you kind of need to be stealthy in pretty much most situations that you're dealing with the public and any kind of area photography platform. So that's always a benefit on the Air 2S side. The Mavic 3 isn't uh, large or cumbersome by any means, but having something light and portable is always gonna be an advantage on a drone side. Additionally, this isn't a, a unique advantage, but uh, the fact that you have the same dynamic range, same overall clarity, and uh, generally, if you're shooting at 30 FPS, the 5K or 4K video capturing performance in ideal lighting situations is going to be 98% the same, since both cameras can have over 12 stops of dynamic range, both can shoot D-log picture profile settings, so you have decent amount of options in terms of color grading and color correction from a post-production standpoint, and uh, in terms of the 
last advantage definitely has to be the price point. At half the price, you can typically get the Air 2S for under $1,000 if you're just getting the drone, one battery, and the controller. You really can't uh, beat that kind of value considering the fact that right now you also have the smart modes capabilities already enabled versus temporarily on the Mavic 3. You're still waiting for that firmware upgrade, which should be available early 2022. But besides those notions, that's really it uh, for this video. I definitely love to know what you guys think is the best drone out there. Now, if I had to pick between the two, I would generally side with uh, the uh, Mavic Air 2S. It has all the features that I need, and uh, typically I'm not shooting at night, so the low light uh, factor of it is really not that important to me. And you can still work with the low light performance that you have with the Air 2S nonetheless. Uh, but just the portability factor, the price point is definitely more suited towards my needs. But uh, uh, for somebody looking to get the most uh, out of their air photography platform, having the ability to shoot ProRes and having slightly more dynamic range and better low light performance is probably going to still gravitate towards uh, the newer platform. But again, love to know what you guys think. If you want more details about anything we talked about, check the description down below for those links. If you go through our Amazon affiliate link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps support and make content like this possible. If you want to help us even more, you can donate through our paypal.me but uh, the best thing you can do is just keep watching sharing commenting and obviously subscribe if you haven't already check out our video talking about the mavic 3 versus the previous generation mavic 2 pro or our dedicated review on the mavic 3 which will also be in the description thanks again for watching we'll see you later take care